I knew the secret place more because I'm an introvert, so I don't talk more to people. I don't tell people what I'm feeling. But when I'm alone, I'm just worshiping God. I'm able to release the pain. In fact, one of the children I lost on an altar in a oh. conference. And I remember my bishop told uh, the, the guys that were taking me to the hospital, please take her home. I told them, if you take me home, I will die. I live for this. And I remember it was the last day of a conference. And I, I told them, I'm still going to sing. I'm still going to, to lead that worship service. Lily, I sang like I'm dying the next minute. Oh I was shaking like a leaf. What amazed me is that God used that opportunity in the middle of a pain. God healed tumors. It was a, a, a conference for pastors and uh, bishops. People that came sick in that conference, they were healed, but I was so broken as a pastor. Beautiful concert by Jane Allaire. It was to record her Taken Over album, and she's gonna be telling us all about it. She's here with us today. She's got such a rich, rich testimony. I can't wait to begin. Karibu sana. Thank you. Oh, it's so good to see you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. With your signature hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's in the concert, it's everywhere. Yes. Wow, that's your signature style. Yeah. Karibu sana, Jane. Asante. Um, you're looking amazing. Thank you, thank you. Tell us a bit about yourself, introduce yourself to us. We know you're a musician, you've yes. got a big voice, <laughs> and we want to get to know more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Jane is a, a simple lady that loves Jesus. Married to one man for the last 13 years by the grace of God. Wow. <laughs> yes, and a minister of the gospel. Wow. Mm -hmm. oh, I love that. Nice and compact. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind if I ask how old are you? Yes, I'm 40 years. Ah, I think they say life begins at 40. I yeah. ask because yes. the way you've introduced yourself, mm -hmm. it's so strict. You, you, you know who you are. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about the Taken Over concert. That I have to start there because that's the thing that uh, YouTube brought to me that, yes. that made me know Jane Allaire. Uh -huh. Yeah, tell us about it. Well, um, for the longest time, me and my husband have been talking about doing a live, not concert, but recording live because that is where my strength is at. So this time, when that was 2019, my husband was like, we're going to do it. And then I'm, I'm thinking, dude, this is a big thing. We don't have the money. But he told me, we're going to do it because we've been saying this for the longest time. I feel it's the right time. And uh, we had all these songs that we had written together, me and my husband. And so he was like, yeah, let's do this to the glory of God. And we embarked on the journey. Wow. Yes. Your husband is also a musician? Yes, he's a pastor and my producer also. How cool is that? How did you guys meet? Whoa, that's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, Kofupi. Yes, yeah, so um, I train worship ministers. I teach uh, worship ministers about worship. And so I was invited to teach their team in their church. Mm. And uh, I don't want to go to details, but when I'm going to their church, I had a ring for some time, for like six years, because I was heartbroken. Oh. And so when I'm entering in that church, one, one, of, the, one of the friends said, um, please tour your pity because I feel it's time. And I entered the church without the ring and God uh, ordained our steps, we met. But uh, I had already told God I don't want any relationship based on a uh, phone. And because I was busy in Thika and he's in Nairobi, when I entered and went to the altar, somebody stole my phone. Allah? Yes. When I came back, and it's a big church, the only phone that could look for my phone was his phone. So he got my number like that. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks later, after that, he proposed. He never said, um, oh, I like you, you know. Uh, no. He just said, will you marry me? You're my wife. What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I said yes, and we'd quoted for one year, and this is us, 13 years later. <laughs> Have you ever broken up? Nope. 
<laughs> okay, tell yeah. me about the heartbreak. Well, okay, so I had dated this young man for some time. And um, I live in, at uh, that time I, I lived with my mother in Thika. But our church was in Kitengela. So every time I would go to Kitengela, his best friend would tell me that he's always misbehaving. Oh. And I didn't take his words. So I was like, uh, you just jealous type. So I was like, uh, I'm just brushing it off every time you tell me. And we planned everything. He paid the diary. We planned the wedding. And everything is ready. Yeah, like two months to the wedding. Then the friend was like, please, please. This one day I, was, I had a, a crusade in Kitengela. He told me, please, don't sleep in Kitengela. When you come, make sure when you come, that is on Monday morning, go to his house. And I was like, for the sake of peace, let me do what he's always telling me. So I came back home early in the morning. That is Monday morning. I went to his house. A lady opened the house. <laughs> and I was like, okay. But then at the end, I just entered his house mm -hmm. because I couldn't stand. I was shaking. Oh my God. I'm shocked and I'm founded. I don't know what to say. So I'm looking at him. I can't cry, but tears are just rolling out oh my, my, uh, my cheek. And then the lady, she knew me. So she's like, she didn't know what to say. She knew you? Yes. She didn't know what to say. So him, he's calling her name. I don't want to mention her name. And he, he comes out, he finds me sitting. And he, he, even, he didn't know what to say. So I walked out of the house, got into depression, like serious depression. Three months after our, our breakup, they got married because apparently the lady got pregnant and they wanted to hide the whole thing. So I had to be moved from Thika to my brother's house in Nairobi because my mother thought I'll go cuckoos. I couldn't take it. Oh so after that, I was like, I'm done. I'm just done. Let me just serve God. And so I put a, a ring on my finger. Mm. People thought I'm married, but I wasn't married. Yeah. And so God was so faithful. I, well, I was serving him. Mm. He ordained my steps and I found mm. my husband. Wow. Yes. 13 years. Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All that was brought about by the Taken Over concert. Yes. Um, before we go into the other, you know, aspects of your life. Yes. Let's talk about the, the music. Mm. What inspired the song, the lead song, Taken Over? T taken Over. So yeah. this time I, I had uh, lost my third born. Mm. And I was in the hospital. They had operated me. Oh, and one of my best friends came to see me. So every time I would sit down for like five minutes and I would pass out because I had these drugs, they had uh, injected me. So one of the time when I sat down, she told me, don't worry, Jane, because I was in a lot of pain. She told me, those were her words. She, she told me, the Lord has taken over. And I remember when she said that I passed out because she was leaving. Mm -hmm. when, I woke, when I woke up, she was not there. But I held on those words that the Lord has taken over. And I remember after I went back to church, I sang that song that the Lord has taken over. And I had this trust that in, in, in my heart that God has taken over everything that concerns me. Wow. Yes. Could you sing a bit of it for us? Yes. He has taken over, taken over. He has taken over his turned things around. For his glory, for his glory, for his glory, Yahweh, he has taken over. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful song. Amen, amen. The loss of a first child mm. and then a second one mm -hmm. and then a third one. Yes. What does it do to a woman? For me, it broke me into so many pieces. As a woman, you feel you're not complete because we are created to bring forth. Yeah. As a woman, you know, even as a child, the way we are playing, we only play with dolls because our mindset is at some point I will bring forth. And for this one now happened, I've been waiting after the heartbreak, I've been waiting for this man. 
And then when he comes, I'm still there excited, waiting to hold his baby, bring up a family. And then that happens. Yeah. I was like, my mother was the one, the only person I could talk to. I could ask her, because when I conceived the first baby, I didn't know how people feel. So she was my doctor. She, apparently she's not a doctor, but she was my doctor. <laughs> so <laughs> doctor mommy. Yes. So I would call her and I'm telling her what I'm feeling. And she's telling me, yeah, uh, people feel like that, but take it easy. So I, I lost my firstborn through miscarriage. And I'm thinking, God, I've kept myself. I've been waiting for you. Why should I miscarry? And I'm still murmuring. I conceive again the next year. But this time, my baby goes to the, the um, tube and it ruptures. It almost kills me. That's the ectopic? Yes. Oh my goodness. And I'm thinking when I'm in the theater room, I'm thinking, God, why me? Those were my, my questions. Why me? What have I done that you've not forgiven me? Yeah. It breaks a woman to a point that you cannot look at people. When you see other women uh, holding their children, you cannot even attend a, a baby shower yeah. because you feel like you're not a complete woman. And I thank God for my husband. Um, one day after, I kept on asking him, are you sure you love me after all this? One day he took me, that, that was before we lost our third born. Mm. He, took, he took me out for coffee and he told me, write this date down. I did not marry you as a baby making machine. I married you because I loved you. Hey, what's his name? <laughs> He's called Donna. Donna? <laughs> yeah. I don't my coffee a kilo. <laughs> wow, that's powerful. Yes, I tell you the truth, that healed me, Lily. It that healed me as a woman because I knew this man did not marry me because he, we had a child together. He married me because he loved me. And so after over time, even when we lost our third born, the fourth born and the fifth, uh, fifth born, he's been there confirming his love for me. And he told me that, in fact, there was a time somebody tried to hurt me through that. And he told me, how dare they? The only person that can question you about our children is me. Nobody else has the right to ask you about our children. Because I know you as a woman, a complete woman, that can take in because you have carried not one, not two, yeah. more than thrice you've carried my children. Yeah. So that gives me confidence as a woman mm -hmm. to know that I'm loved and I'm not a lesser woman because I don't have a child. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. You're so strong, <laughs> and you told me you didn't even do therapy. No. I cannot comprehend <laughs> how you did it without therapy. My strength only came when I released myself in worship. Mm -hmm. Those were the times that I worshipped in the secret place more than ever before. I knew the secret place more because I'm an introvert, so I don't talk more to people. I don't tell people what I'm feeling. But when I'm alone, I'm just worshiping God. I'm able to release the pain. In fact, one of the children I lost on an altar in a oh. conference. And I remember my bishop told uh, the, the guys that were taking me to the hospital, please take her home. I told them, if you take me home, I will die. I live for this. And I remember it was the last day of a conference. And I, I told them, I'm still going to sing. I'm still going to, to lead that worship service. Lily, I sang like I'm dying the next minute. Oh I was shaking like a leaf. What amazed me is that God used that opportunity. In the middle of a pain, God healed tumors. It was a, a conference for pastors and with, uh, bishops. People that came sick in that conference, they were healed. But I was so broken as a person. I'm going down at, the, at that altar and I'm shaking because I'm bleeding. Yeah, you're bleeding. Yes, I'm bleeding. And you must be bleeding profusely. Yes, I'm bleeding. But the testimonies that are coming, I'm thinking, God, you're not fair. You're not fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a brain freeze. <laughs> You've lost a baby at the altar. Yes. 
But instead of throwing your hands at God and saying, you know what? You do you. Yes. You're insisting that you want to worship him mm -hmm. and you want to continue with music. Yeah. And I believe that music is so powerful. Mm -hmm. I would like you to, because I know there are people uh, who don't benefit from therapy. Yeah. And some things only God can yeah. intervene. Yes. Encourage someone, that's your camera, yeah. who is going through so much pain. How will they worship? Mm. How, how would you bring worship out mm. of your mouth? Mm, mm. Uh, I like a song that goes, By the rivers of Babylon. Mm, mm. And it says, <clears throat> How shall we sing the Lord's song mm. in a strange land? Mm, mm. And I think that's what you, you've done mm. so much. Yeah. Please encourage someone. One of the things that I know as a person is that Worship is not the song, it is the posture of our hearts. We might be broken outside and people can't even reach out to us. We can go to therapies, but people cannot even reach where no hand can reach. But there's a God who sees even the language, he can decode the language of tears. Sometimes I was not able to sing without crying because I was in so much pain, but you know, one thing I knew is that this God knows the language of tears. He knows the language of our posture. You can lie down when you're so broken. You can sit down and tell God, take this broken heart and mend it. God is a, an expert of using broken things. Oh Allow him to use you. Allow him to minister to you at that place that you feel like you're so broken that he cannot reach out. There's only one, one, more, that one God that can reach out to where no hand can touch. This physical, place, uh, this physical flesh we can touch, but there's a place no hand can touch, and that is where God can touch. Allow him. God cannot invade where we, when, when we're not allowing him to come. Allow him. Yeah. Sometimes it is hard, but I, I like the, the, the language of worship. It's not the song. It's the posture. Surrender. You might be so mad that you have lost countless children, mm -hmm. but do you know you are winning anyway? You are winning in God. It doesn't matter. One thing I'm very sure is that I will see my children. Amen. One day I will see my children. Mm -hmm. It might not be in this realm, but I will see my children. I have named them. So it doesn't matter what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Trust God in that season because he is able to touch you where no hand can touch. Yeah. Wow. That's powerful. Which is your best favorite song from your collection? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Everybody struggles with that yes, question. Yes, yes. But uh, I have one, uh, two in fact, because one we have not released yet. Okay. But one of them is that uh, Sifa Naibada. Mm -hmm. Because I'm always thinking, what else do I do if I don't worship? What is that one thing that will separate me from the love of God? What is that one thing that will silence my worship? And so every time I open my mouth, I say, everything that I am will give you praise. So Sifa and Ibada for me is the it. It is a posture of my heart that it doesn't matter what I'm going through, I will praise you. Wow. Yes. Ah, okay. Yes. <laughs> Overcomer is another big song. I've, we, we've really watched it a lot at mm. Deremo. Yes. Tell us about it. Well, uh, Overcome came in a time that also we had lost our child, uh, mm -hmm. one of our children. Mm -hmm. And we were supposed to go to Kijabe mm -hmm. to see one of the doctors. And uh, so we were preparing. We were in Kitengela, we were going all the way to, Ki to Kijabe. We didn't have a car. And my husband is running everywhere to prepare for that day. But uh, the one person that we trusted to give us a car, he boycotted at the last minute. But mm -hmm. as in like he changed his mind, tomorrow we are supposed to go, to, he calls today. And we're thinking, uh... Did he know you're unwell? Yes, he knew. 
So my husband calls me literally crying because he was like, babe, we don't have a car. How do you go? He was crying. And I remember, Lily, I was in the kitchen washing my utensils, preparing dinner. And my husband calls me so broken. And I'm thinking we're still healing because I had lost a child. Yeah. And we had this uh, uh, appointment with this doctor. And I'm thinking, how can people be so not reliable? But the Holy Spirit was so confirming that I'm the one that you can trust. I'm that one thing that is constant. People can change anytime. And so he started talking to me in, in a way that it doesn't matter what we are going through, we have overcome. It doesn't matter uh, what people will do to us, we have overcome in Jesus. Yeah, that's how the song came. In fact, I started singing it at that time and I cried so much. Yeah. By the time my husband is coming in the house, I was so excited. I told him, babe, babe, ni mepata <laughs> So I started singing. The well, by the way, we musician. started singing together. Wow. Crying together. We, we love crying together. So we cried that's and beautiful. God provided. We went. That's how we wow. overcome our kill. <laughs> Gosh, I mean, in the mess, God is doing miracles. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What about um, you are good? You're good. In th that's the same aspect I'm looking at my situation, what I've gone through. Yeah. The goodness of God or the faithfulness of God is not questioned by what we go through. Mm. Because most of the time you feel like, because I, I have lost a loved one, I have lost that, I have done that. Uh, it's like we question God, but God is still on the throne. Yeah. Kings don't stand to rule, they sit. Because I know he's seated and I am seated with him, he is good all the time, wow. in all season. That's how the song came. Ah. Emmanuel. Wow. I like that. There's a story. <laughs> story time. <laughs> so, uh -huh. I, in every, any, any, each and every one of our songs that yeah. came, we have attached to what we've gone through. Yeah. Uh, any Christian, any child of God, they have worked at with God at a personal level, and it is important to know God, Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. You can know the God of Lily, but it is important to know the Emmanuel, mm -hmm. God with you at all times. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Because it is one thing to know the God of others, mm -hmm. but when you know he's always with you, mm -hmm. I tell you the truth, it does not matter what. I will stand tall as a woman, I will not allow anyone to put me down because I have not brought, um, or I'm, I'm not holding my child. I know I'm a daughter of the Most High God, yeah. and He is Emmanuel, God with me, mm. God for me, mm. all the time. Mm. Yes. Why did you sigh when I asked? Um, because I'm, I, I have a heart for the ladies, mm. and when I'm talking to ladies, you feel like people are, are discouraged and they're dis disconnected, and they've not allowed themselves to really know Emmanuel, the one that is constant mm. in their life. Because we go through so much, and it's, it is kind of, we, we, we close that door that God cannot really a fellowship with us we cannot allow him to reach out to us mm -hmm. so uh, it, it is a, 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 a passion for ladies to know that he's always there it doesn't matter if, if your your son has turned to be something that you didn't expect mm -hmm. he's still God mm -hmm. he's still Emmanuel yeah because there are so many uh, aspects of a woman's struggle yes you may be struggling with fertility. Yeah. Someone else has children, but maybe special needs children. Yes. And then another woman, maybe her children have grown up, but they've gone in a way that she didn't want. Yes. And I think there's so many aspects yeah. and it's important to know God yes. for yourself. Oh, yeah. Because when you know that, we are just stewards as mothers. Yeah. We were just given this uh, blessings, these seeds, to bring them in the ways of the Lord. As a mother, the only thing you can do is guide them. Yeah. Then they can choose when they grow up. Yeah. You have done your part, allow God. Mm -hmm. Because when you, you always, you're holding on to, I didn't do better. You can only do so much. 
yeah. allow God. I like uh, uh, referring to Esther chapter 5, mm -hmm. verse 2 and 3. Mm -hmm. When Esther prayed for three days, she stood in the inner court. There's something about a woman that knows where she's standing with God. Esther stood with so much boldness, and it was known that when you come before the king, if he has not called you, you would be punished. Yes. yes. But because she had prayed, and she had the backup of the rest, she stood with boldness in the inner court, and she obtained favor before the king. Mm. What I'm saying to any woman, know your place in God and stand in his presence because when you stand I, I don't know what else I can say but there's something about the presence of God that covers all these things mm -hmm. all these things yeah. all the burdens that we feel that we have it, it, the weight goes away because you have done your part allow God yeah allow God yeah wow um, this is a bit of a technical question yeah. would you say that you make money from your music not because for me honestly <laughs> <laughs> my music well I, it's out there but yeah. I, I don't it's I mean, ministry yes for me it's ministry okay yes i am Billy. thank you so much for watching this video make sure you subscribe to this channel comment like and of course you can share thank you